So it's my pleasure to introduce to you today, Kelechi Amadi Obi. Hey, you are wearing a proper shirt today, I'm so happy. You are always wearing, <laughs> you are still wearing your jeans. It's nice to see you. Very, very nice yeah. to see you, I'm happy. You know, and this is different, we're not working. <laughs> exactly. Now you are in front of me, in my parlor, answering <laughs> questions. But sincerely, is your son, is your, I saw him also dealing with some art, you know, on his computer though. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, ah, is he also as creative as you are? Oh, he's, he's even better than I was at really? his age. Because he's expressing himself. Yes. But yes. As, as a young person, did you know which direction you would go, sincerely? Well, I just knew that I loved making images, period. Just like the other kids would enjoy playing football and playing games. Uh, what gave me joy was making images, drawing. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, was, that, that was something I knew I could do better than most people on the average. Really? And um, how did your background, your growing up, you know, you, do, do you know this auntie I'm talking about? Yes, uh -huh. Auntie Nenna, Mrs. Mrs. Obie. You know, she used to run a <laughs> class that I used to go for, and she would go, and I went to her home one day, we saw all these paintings, and he said, that's my nephew, and he's a lawyer. <laughs> you know, that's always the surprise, and he's a lawyer. Yes. So why did you go do law? Oh, well, I mean, you see, I grew up in Omaha. Um, my father was a high court judge. He was the most senior judge in Omaha then. Mm -hmm. And um, there was no museum, there was no gallery, there was no art school, so I'd never met a professional artist. But there was a library. There was a state library next to my house was my primary school, which was Library Avenue Primary School, and next to it was a state library. And that library had a treasure trove of knowledge for me about the arts. And I did mine that treasure. And so I had inside my head so much knowledge about Western artists, Picasso, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, but I'd never met a, a real artist. So I thought it was, you know, people. Only Yibo people. Yeah, just Only some Europeans. distant fantasies that I loved reading about and I would, wouldn't mind practicing. But I didn't see it as something anybody would do until I got into university. Of course, in my house, um, there were two. What university did you go in, Suka? Yes, University of Nigeria. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's close to home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, once I got, I got into university, I then realized that, yes, there are people who are practicing art as a profession. But you didn't drop out of law. Well, um, in my third year, I nearly did. I nearly did. Because it was, it was a dilemma. All I wanted to do was draw and paint. Did you yes. used to go to the art department while you were in school? There was no art department in Enugu campus. Okay. You see, that was the, the thing. The art department was in Osaka, which was quite a distance from mm -hmm. Enugu. But in, in Enugu itself, there was IMT. And then we had the Aka group of artists. Right next to my university was Bona Galleries. Mm -hmm. And they used to exhibit. It was, it was like a dream come true for me to go for the exhibitions, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it, Enugu had a thriving, the British Council was, was also very active then. Mm -hmm. so was there a situation of you go to class today, you go to museum tomorrow, big to gallery tomorrow? Why well, I didn't miss any of the exhibitions. But you see, I established a business in school. I used to make posters and portraits and things like that. I started making a good living while I was in university. Mm -hmm. I realized that, yes. And this was an untrained eye, untrained hand? Well, I would call myself extremely trained because I would say, you know, I was reading law part-time and I was practicing art full-time. And what I did was right from primary school, I had realized the power of reading and research because then that library that was close to my house. So I would read meticulously and research meticulously any area I was interested in in art. So most of the things people were studying in art school, I had read over and over again and practiced. Self-taught. Yes on my own. I realized that routine, that you would get better with practice, but not just practice, but practice to get better, practice mm -hmm. with knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you managed to finish the law school? Oh, yes. I, um, I, I nearly sort of changed course, but when I went to the art school and I looked at what the final year students were doing, I said, okay. I'm, I know I'm, all of these things. I'm going, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to give my parents that kind of trauma. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to finish. Were you the first son? No, ah, we are seven. Okay. You know? Um, are you the first lawyer? 
No, we are four lawyers. And <laughs> two so maybe that pressure doctors. wasn't there, so it didn't really matter. Yes, you know, and I, I, I decided there and then that this was the direction I was going to go in. And, um, so what did you do after you graduated? I finished law school in Lagos then. That mm. was where I had to stay with my auntie, my auntie, mm. auntie mm. Nenna. And she, she's like a guardian angel. She's very benevolent and, you know, accommodate all these young people. From home, yeah. Yeah, you imagine some lawyer who said he was going to be an artist mm -hmm. and it was ridiculous, mm -hmm. you know. But she, she accommodated me. And immediately from law school, I went to stay with her and I decided I was going to be an artist, period. You know, so I started drawing. It, it, it was, a, how do I put it? For most people, it was the most irrational thing anybody yeah. could do because um, my father unfortunately died after law school. So I didn't even have the opportunity to have the fight with him. <laughs> yes, because I knew it was going to be a fight to <laughs> tell him I, I was go not going to practice law and I was going to be an artist. You know, but um, the only thing I could afford was cardboard paper and pencil. Really. And I said, look, you know, I can use this and I can make a living. Mm -hmm. So I started to draw. Mm -hmm. Made, uh, then I, I started doing watercolor. Yeah, I think it was then, the watercolors I saw. Yeah, mm -hmm. I started doing watercolor. And you, I couldn't paint one full sheet of watercolor paper. I had to cut it into four because there was no space, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know um, what did mommy say? Mommy was worried. Mommy had retired then and she, she was back home, uh, you know, worried. And um, something happened, you know. One of my uncles, who's a medical doctor, he came to Lagos and he said, Kalechi, um, we know you're super passionate about your art, but maybe you should <laughs> register with a law firm and, and do law on the side while you're still doing your art. Mm -hmm. So I knew, I knew he was echoing the worries of my mom. So I said, look, you know, just go back home and tell my mom, at least she hears that Kelechi is practicing art, uh, law. She should start crying. She knows that Kelechi <laughs> has failed. OK, but you see, one thing about you is that you've expressed yourself in many genres. And I think what's happening is when you see a gap, you just feel it. Photography happened again, and suddenly people forget that you're an artist. <laughs> you're now the top, the most sought after photographer. And for you, I know it's beyond the money. Yes. It's the passion. Yes. Yeah, I also found out early in life that Making images turns you to a storyteller. So each drawing, each painting tells a story. And so I like to refer to myself as a storyteller. I just use the medium of either painting, photography. Even these days, I'm video. dabbling into video. Yeah, and I see again. all the videos you do. When you do a shoot, you're not <laughs> recording, and you have a YouTube channel. Yeah. You know, you know. I'm showing all of those things. Exactly. So it's, it's about storytelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I wouldn't even ask a photographer, I would say I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. It's the medium that, whatever medium that sort of uh, I get excited about. So what next for you, do we know? Apart, you have a magazine because you saw that. I want to tell a story in a different way with my photographs. <laughs> you have this YouTube channel. So what other, what other norms are you going to break? I take life one day at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I like to make goals for the future and all that, but I believe in the present. Are you rich? Hmm. <laughs> well, you see, like why, why is millions is ruling the world? Oh, well, I mean, you know, for me, I'm, how do I put it? I'm happy, you know, for me. And that's well. Yeah, for me, yeah. I'm happy I can take care of my responsibilities. You know, I've got four beautiful children, lovely wife, and it's, we can take care of our basic needs and it's good. You know, I mean, and uh, that's, that's beautiful. It gives me an opportunity to, to keep chasing, you know, my passion. Chasing your dreams. Yeah. So I take a break and I return again with my next guest. And after that, we shall quickly engage on the panel. Just five minutes. Okay. Don't go away.